Thursday live office hours, helping you build a career you love, 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 love this time of week. Thanks for showing up. Thanks, thanks, thanks for your attention. I love it. I love helping you. And I just, I can't thank you enough for showing up week in, week out. I got an hour for you today. It's all about your questions. I don't have a lot of other things to say. I'm fresh. I'm frosty. I'm feeling really fast. Got my meditating in, got my strength training in, got my hour and a half bike ride in. I'm ready to go. So get in, say hi. Let me know where you're from. Let me know who you are, what you need. Put some question marks in front of your questions so I can find them. And uh, if you love the shows, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and all that good stuff too. Aaron Z, ah, is that Aaron Z, my boot camper? Great to see you. Eduardo, how are you? Got a question. What do we got? Hey, Andy, Eduardo from Miami, first timer, and the first question, Thursday, June 25th, 1101. All right, what do we got? Two interviews coming up, awesome. One is the second round with a company I really want to be a part of. The other is a company I was referred to by a friend of mine. If I'm offered a position in the latter while waiting to hear from my preferred employer, what should I say to stall the offer? Okay, so... Uh, Eduardo, that is a wonderful dilemma. Obviously, I, I understand you're speculating. You want to be prepared in the event this occurs. It depends what you say to each employer depends on your preference. So uh, I, I could probably spend, and I think I have spent quite a bit of time talking about how you want to tee this up. It all starts, however, with the communication that you are giving to an employer throughout the interviewing process. So when you start an interview process, there are certain things you want to tell the employer. One of them is whether you're interviewing with other companies, whether they're the only one who's interviewing, and you want to set a precedent for the level of communication that you are going to provide them. Okay, this is really important. A lot of times, and 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 I know you're a, you're a first timer here. Maybe I'm I'm not sure if you're a first timer to my channel, but for all all the folks here that that watch me week in and week out, one of the things that I say is as you start your process, any process, as you do anything, as you build a business, as you go into an interview, as you start with a company, as you do anything, a lot of the success that you are going to achieve has a lot to do with the seeds you're planting early on and that you actually are planning to be successful. Why am I making such a big deal about this? Because if you ultimately are getting an offer from one company and another company is in, you're in the process and you're trailing a little bit, you have a greater likelihood of getting the accommodations that you are requesting if You've already planted the seeds, communicated with them, managed their expectations that I have multiple interviewing processes going on. So if I go into the interviewing process and I say to you, hey, you're the only one I'm interviewing with, that's company number one, okay? But I will let you know if anything comes up. Then company number two comes up, right? The referral from your friend. So I would immediately let company number two know, hey, I've got an interviewing process going with somebody else. Here's where I, here's who they are. Here's the name of the company, here's the position I'm interviewing for, and here's exactly where I am in the process. You are not losing any leverage by doing any of this. You are informing them and you are earning a reputation in their mind as somebody who is communicative and won't surprise them. Okay, so I had a screen with the recruiter. That's it. You go back to the, to the company that you're now interviewing with, the second company, and you say, hey, I just had an, an I'm interviewing with this other company, Here's where I am. I just had a screen with the recruiter. I'm going in the second wave and so on. If, if anything changes, I will let you know. I just wanted to inform you that I'm, I'm there. And in return, quid pro quo kicks in. Are there any other candidates interviewing for the position? Are there, right? I'm going to share with you all my stuff. I want you to share with me all your stuff so we know what's going on. Now, fast forward, you get down the road, and now you're communicating along the way. One company gives you an offer. You say to them, and I, here's where we're going to kind of wrap this one up because I could go through all the permutations and combinations of this stuff. But effectively, at this point, you can say to them, if they are your lead pony and this is the job you want, you can say to them, okay, I'm receptive. I want to make it work with you. I have this other thing going. I want to make it work with you. Give me your offer and so on. And then you just work it. Okay, if, if the first offer it comes through, but it isn't your lead pony, 
it's the second horse in the race or the third or fourth or whatever, you need to say to them, okay, I have this other opportunity that I've previously mentioned to you. Uh, I should be wrapping up with them by. You need to know all this. You need to know what that process looks like. You need to know when that might conclude. Are there four other candidates? Are we, is this going to be another month? Is it going to be another four days? Right. So you need to say to the company who's giving you the offer, I really would like to finish it out with the other company uh, to be respectful to you. I will make sure that I give you an answer by, but you need to know what this process looks like over here so that you can give them some kind of target date. Now, if you say to them, hey, I need another 10 days, you're going to get it as long as you've been communicating. Think about if you get down to the end, they give you an offer and then you say, well, there's this other company I'm interviewing with, surprise, and I'm not really sure how much longer that's going to be. How much time are you going to give me to decide on this? Right? That's a sticky situation. Okay, so one thing uh, that you need to do is you definitely should watch a video that I have on the YouTube channel about interviewing when there's multiple candidates involved. Stacy, if you got your dancing shoes on, see if we can pull that up for Eduardo. But Eduardo, that's what I would do. You have to, what you say is going to be dependent on how you feel about this company. If this is the first company with the offers, the one you want, you grab it, you go, you negotiate the heck out of it, you get the best deal. You tell them, I love you most. I want this offer, put it in front of me, you go through your you go through your iteration, I have a whole salary negotiation playlist, knock your socks off. But if it's not, then you're gonna have to make the request, okay? In order to make the request effectively, I would go watch the video that I just mentioned about um, how to interview when there's multiple candidates involved or something of that nature. It's But it's on the YouTube channel and that will talk to you about how to set yourself up early on for success. People remember this. You know, you might think, well, people fail because they're not talented, they haven't worked hard enough and all that good stuff. And a lot of times that's true. But just as many people fail because they didn't plan to be successful. Okay, then they get down to the goal line and they fumble the ball. All right, because they didn't plan to be successful. Businesses that did nothing but focus on sales, but then when their products started to sell, they didn't know how to service it and their customers left. That's what I'm talking about. It's the same kind of thing in a job interview. So make sure you're planning to succeed. You should be planning. And all you boot campers out there, you should be planning for multiple offers. Okay? And, and if we got any boot campers, let's talk about all those offers you're getting. All right, Eduardo, welcome to Live Office Hours. Hope you enjoyed that. I, uh, I wish you lots of luck, and I hope everybody in the community can give Eduardo a big high 10. All right, Adam Stark, how you doing from the other side of the pond? Um, Adam Stark, I've been researching new career options. I've got it down to a few options that I'd be able to do, enjoy, will do. Do you have any advice on getting it down to the one? Adam, go watch again the video on how to choose the right job. If you need more advice than that, you gotta get into boot camp. That's where all the all the other stuff comes into play. All right, Giovanni, great to see you. Oh, there's me, and there's Aaron Z. I think this is my Aaron Z boot camper, it would be my guess. Uh, hey Andy, you discussed making your list of needs in module one, that's what she's referring to. It resonated when you said not to listen to what everyone else says. I will always tell you that. Uh, I have many people in my ear telling me just take this job, tell them to go away and put the earmuffs on, Aaron, put the earmuffs on. I get there and I'm unhappy. I realize why they never fit my criteria. Any words of wisdom for not feeling bad about my needs as well as pressure, uh, feeling pressure from others about being picky. Okay, folks, this is phenomenal. I, 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 could, I could spend the next 51 minutes ro rolling through this but this is really Im important and there's a couple things I want to point Aaron to you and and, and anybody else remember this Re remember this what I'm going to tell you I'm I, I would probably clip this sucker out and loop it a few times no one and I mean nobody in this world is going to be able to predict your future people are awful at predicting their own future they're horrendous at predicting yours. Okay, why is that the case? Well, number one, they're not you. So you process the world the way you process the world and you're the only one that processes the world that way, 
right? You and I might have philosophical agreements about how we think, but I, when I look at the world, I factor in what? My experience, my working at trying to alter my mind, approach the world a certain way, with the right kind of mindset, but I have different variables that I'm dealing with, right? I don't have any children. Somebody's got children. They got other things that are contributing. I'm not divorced. I'm married, right? I'm, I'm, I'm not dating somebody. We're not breaking up. All of these things that you have going on that you had in the past or that you have at any moment in time contribute to your ability to process this world. And the other thing, you no one can tell you what to care about. I'll never tell you what to care about. I could provide you insight into how this might impact you down the road, but here again, I'm also speculating because I don't know what's going to happen. So if you do what Aaron is mentioning, and I know some of you are in the boot camp and some of you are not in my job search boot camp, but the most important thing is she is writing down her own requirements. And let's, let's get you something really specific here. If I have my list of needs of what I uh, I think will make me happy, right? Because you, so you think will make you happy. You're not always accurate, but let's just say you are. And I look at different options in this world. Different options could be start my own business. It could be a career in this field. It could be a career in that field. Different options could be work for this employer in this role, work for a different employer in the same role. All of these are different. And what most people do is they use the worst decision-making methodology known to man called moral algebra. And if you've never heard of moral algebra, I guarantee you've done it a dozen times before you've shown up today to see me where you've made pros and cons lists because you are making a relative choice between option A and option B. And you're comparing two things one against the other. Okay, and you're making these pros and cons lists and advantages and disadvantages, which is the dumbest way to decide anything because emotionally we cook the books and we make the pluses bigger on the side we want and we make the minuses you know, less on the side we, we want, right? So, so we don't want you measuring your options that way. We want you measuring option A against your needs and option B against your needs and the better horse wins right? As it relates to you. So what does this get down to? Well, company A and company B, there's no saying company A is better than company B, right? One might be financially more stable. One might be ahead a, a in the market as far as market share, but company B might be better for you. Company A might be better for Aaron. Company B might be better for me because of what's important to me and where I want to take my career and what I need to make me happy in the environments that I thrive in. I might thrive in an environment she doesn't thrive in. So I want you guys to tell me how anybody on this earth is going to tell you the best environment that you're going to thrive in. And even if you saw me for a counseling session, I would never tell you what to do. I would always tell you how to think it through and then you can draw your own conclusion. And Aaron, you need to do that. Everybody needs to do that. You want to measure all your options in life against you, a standard set of data, a benchmark that is uniquely you. If you, if you start comparing and contrasting options or you start comparing and contrasting how you're doing inside of one of those options with somebody else, you're going to be unhappy most of the time. So uh, that's the way I feel. And I would tell all those people to go to hell and get out of my face, right? Like, I mean, that's kind of how I feel about it. Now, there's nothing wrong with welcoming opinions, but I wouldn't be welcoming opinions unless you are able to calibrate and factor in and handicap that opinion or, or understand how that opinion resonates with you. So that's the way, that's the way I feel about that. So if you, if you want to take counsel, just make sure you're keeping it in the proper context. If you don't want to take the counsel, don't. I don't ask anybody what I should do. I don't ask anybody what I should try. I just try it, and then I look at the data, and I say, okay, maybe that was right. Maybe I need to change some of my variables. Maybe I need to alter a few things. Try it again. Life is like that. Every single day of your life is like that. So Aaron, I hope that helps. Tell them to get out of your face. See you in a boot camp. Medina, how you doing from France? What do we got here? Something about, let me see if I could, ooh, it's really close to, ooh, sorry. All right, Medina, should a resume we use for boss hunting differ from the one we use for an ATS? No, final answer. 
Uh, the only thing I would say there, Medina, is watch the keywords. So if, if, if I was actually, you know what? Let's do this again because I, I owe you better than that. All right. Uh, Medina's asking, should a resume we use for boss hunting differ from the one we use for an ATS? A couple things. Boss hunting, for those of you that are not familiar, you need to get familiar with it. Uh, maybe Stacy could drop the boss hunting uh, video in, uh, in the chat. Boss hunting is literally boss hunting. You are sending your resume and a cover letter and an email directly to somebody that you are speculating is the boss. That means no ATS, right? You're going direct. LinkedIn, direct email, or whatever. Applicant trashing system is you're putting it in the corporate system. It usually gets squashed most of the time, 97% of the time you don't, you're, you don't even get seen. And you're, you're letting a, a bot, a computer, uh, assemble whether your resume, not even you, these words on a piece of paper or on a machine are in alignment with the way they've set their job description, and they've set the applicant trashing system to actually look at your resume, okay? So uh, what I would do is I would try to find the boss. However, before I found the boss, or if I found the boss, before I sent the boss my resume, if I saw a job description that was out in public, it looks like this person, you know, Andy's hiring for a recruiter at Mile Walk. I'm going to send a message directly to Andy, not the applicant trashing system, and I'm going to I'm going to actually send him my resume. But first you're going to look at the recruiter description. You can see what's Andy looking for. Cold calling and cold emailing and right psychological, you know, mumbo jumbo and reading human behavior and art of selling and all this other stuff. Then what I would do is I would take my resume and I would match it up to the job description with the keywords. Then I would run it through JobScan. JobScan's good. It's not the be all end all. Don't, don't lose sleep over it. Run it through JobScan. Try to improve it. Low hanging fruit stuff. Now I've got a resume that has been somewhat sanitized and calibrated for the applicant tracking system. Okay? But I wouldn't put it in the applicant tra uh, tracking system. Uh, I, would I would send it to the boss because now... What have you done? You've you've aligned the keywords, the nomenclature, and so forth. So I might be looking for a recruiter. I might be looking for an account exec. I might be looking for a whatever. And all the nomenclature that I'm using, you put inside your resume because even the human eye likes to see it. And that's that's the ultimate formula. Then I would send it to the boss. Then I would give the boss seven days. Then I would send the boss a follow-up. I'd say, hey, I, I tried to reach out, just wanted to follow up to see if you were interested in talking about this. Give them another seven days. Then maybe, well, I'd try somebody else. But then if you want to go to the applicant tr uh, trashing system, you go ahead. But I, I just, I am not a fan of the ATS. I call it the applicant trashing system because that's basically what it does with all the, the resumes. You have a very, very low percentage shot of getting through and you have an even lower percentage chance of getting your job that way. So imagine, it, you know, the more senior you are, even the lower the percentage, but on average, let's just call it 3% of the resumes that go into those systems actually get seen by a person. That doesn't even mean you get called, right? So it's some fraction thereof then that means you got to get in, in for an interview and then some fraction thereof get the job. So think about how low the probability is that you getting a job through, through that. And you got a much better chance going direct. So Medina, I hope that helped. That's great. That's a great question. I think I did, I did you a solid there. Okay. All right. What do we got? Callie from upstate New York. Hmm. Legal secretary, 30 years experience, left my job of 18 years late last year for one closer to home. Six plus hours of community, uh, I'm assuming you mean commute, commuting. Um, when, let's see, I'm looking for a new job again. When I get to an interview, how should I answer? Why do you want to leave? Callie, here's what I want you to do. Oh, I got, I got two books today. You know, I don't, folks, both of them are free. Okay, seven dollars material and handling. Take either one. Take them both. Okay, uh, this one here, the very, very first question in my silver bullet interview chapter. So one of the chapters in this book is called the silver bullet interview chapter. It's chapter number six, 
and I, I put in there 14 of the most effective interview questions an employer can ask you, 43 variations of those questions, exactly why the employer is asking it, what the employer is looking for, and I give you the best answer. And why uh, do you want to leave? Why did you leave? Why are you currently looking? Those are all the same question. It's number one. And Callie, I would simply grab the free book and check it out. But ultimately, what you want to do is you want to talk about something aspirational. But in your case, what you could say is you could say, I, I, you know, I was, I was at this wonderful organization. I was, it, it was really about the commute and the amount of time that I was spending in the car, whatever. Obviously, you can see that I was there for 18 years. I really enjoyed it. And that's it. You didn't badmouth the company. It has nothing to do with the company. It was all about you, which is the way you want to go. That's it. And, and here's the other thing. For a lot of you, do not over-explain yourself. Try to get it done very quickly. The less time you're talking about something that could be potentially misconstrued as negative, the better, right? The less time you're talking about it. But in your case, uh, Callie, I would, I, 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 you know what? I, I loved my uh, my job. I'd been there for a long time, as you can see. I'm a faithful employee and very loyal. But it, it was just getting to the point where I needed to find something closer to home for family reasons. That's it. Any employer in the world will understand that. But I would still get an interview intervention. All right, Symbian, one or two. Hello, Andrew, I'm Eric from the Philippines. How are you, Eric? With the pandemic making for a much leaner job market, I am thinking of applying for a lower position which has more openings. I'm confident that I would be able to prepare myself should a higher position be available as well as adjust to the new company. What do you think? Okay, so a couple of things. So Eric is, is asking, should I shoot lower? No, don't. I, I, don't, I don't want you to shoot lower. I don't want you dumbing down your resume. I don't want you changing titles to lower titles. I don't want you taking education off. Yeah, I mean, I get this one a lot. I'm a PhD. I'm an MS. I'm an MBA. Should I take it off the resume? Why? You worked hard for that, didn't you? Be proud of it. Your job is not to dumb yourself down, dumb your resume down, or dumb your stories down for anybody. Your job is to find the right level, the uh, right or above, and get in there and sell yourself and sell the heck out of you to, to get that position. Do not, bad things happen when you tr when you shoot lower. True story. We had this guy Matt in the in the job search boot camp. He was boss hunting, and he is a manager. Okay, generally managerial role. He decided that uh, he thought he was going to be more effective by targeting managers to actually get lower level roles, right? That he would be like super qualified for those. And nobody was responding to him. So he emails me in the system with the Job Search Bootcamp. You get online support. You can access me anytime, whenever you're up, wherever you are in the Philippines, whatever time that is, you pop your question in the, in the system. And then within a day or so, I answer it. So I get back to him. I say, don't do that. Stop it. Go and target directors if you're looking for a managerial role. And as soon as he did that, all of a sudden, he was getting so many responses, he was having, then his questions were problems because he was having trouble scheduling all these interviews that he was having. So please, you've got to target the right level. I know you think that, hey, I'm so overqualified, I should be able to get this opportunity, no problem. But the fact is, they immediately think, why would this person want to target this lower job? And as a matter of fact, why would I want to over, this is what they assume, right? Oh, he, he or she's going to want me to, to pay their current, their current freight when I could get somebody at a lower level who I could pay less. But all these things work against you, okay? So the, the job market, uh, this is, this is it's, it's pretty counterintuitive. I understand that we're in the middle of a pandemic. This thing is not going away, right? Some states in the U.S. are seeing record numbers now of, of illnesses, but there are a lot of people getting jobs every single day. There are a lot of jobs that are available. There are some markets that are doing worse than others. And I've already put about just about every piece of news and evidence and stat 
and philosophy that you need to know to navigate yourself through the coronavirus or COVID-19 pandemic. It's out there on the YouTube channel. What I would say to you, Eric, is make sure you're watching the videos around assessing the different company types that currently exist because of the pandemic, which ones are thriving, which companies are thriving, which markets are thriving, which roles are thriving, and be focusing on those and target the right level. You will have far better success than trying to target lower levels you will. Trust me on this one. And you can go watch those videos. Uh, maybe Stacy can pop. Stacy, pop the one in there. Pop two in there. The one about the four four company types and how to how to job search during the coronavirus pandemic. Those are two that Eric needs. And don't anybody, don't you ever dumb down yourself. Okay, don't be proud. It's your job to sell yourself. Right. I always use this analogy. It is not my job to lower the price of my premium programs with the thought that more people will buy them because they are more attractively priced. It is my job to give you the best value and charge the highest price in relation so that you will understand that what you are paying is a song compared to what you are getting. It's the same kind of thing. You need to be talking about the value you're going to bring and you're coming in at a fair price. That's what you need to focus on. You're going to have better luck going that way. And you're going to be more interested in the positions that you're pursuing. Believe me. Trust me on this one. All right. I hope that helps. Lisa White, have a second interview coming up for a perfect position and good company, but is 55 miles away. Oh, look at this lovely lady. All right. Here we go. Let's go over this. I have a second interview coming up for a perfect position at at a good company, but it's 55 miles away. How do I ask for a remote option without affecting my chances? We'll wait as long as possible. Okay, I love this. All right, couple things. Stacy, have we, uh, I, I, I know we got this one about the remote. Um, when, I, have we made it public yet about when to make the request? Uh, just let me know. Can you Can you slack me? Let me know. Because I want to I wanna help Lisa here. I'm going to give her a little bit. But if we have the video ready and cut and populated, uh, let's, let's put it in the, in the chat, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube. All right, so Lisa, you want this position. It is far away. You want to work remotely. It's a couple of things. Number one, everything is on the table right now. So now we were just gotten done talking about Eric. Eric, in that situation, I don't want anybody dumbing down there resume and in fact I want you expanding your geographies and virtually the whole world is your oyster literally so Lisa you're in I'm guessing you're in the US so any any state I don't care where they are I don't care if it's 55 miles away or 5500 miles away you can target these organizations if if somebody sees you and they say okay well hey you know Lisa you're you're an hour away you know if if you're screaming on the highway um, are you you know, how do you feel about that? Your immediate response should be, I'm open to whatever possibility for the right opportunity. That's the opener, okay? I'm willing to do whatever it takes if the opportunity is right. Yes, I'm aware you're 55 miles away. That's it. Okay. All right, fine. Let's let's continue on. As you start working in through the interview process, somewhere along the way, they might say to you, you know, Lisa, we love you. This is going great. You know, I noticed you're an hour away. I'm guessing we can probably work something out about you working remotely. I'm guessing we can work something out about you working remotely a day a week, two days a week, five days a week, or whatever. Anything they give you, do not take it, okay? This is the biggest mistake you make in the negotiation process is when you accept something before it is time to accept something. So what do I mean? Well, they might say, second interview, you know, we really, you know, for the right person, we'd let you work remotely. If you say, that'd be great, I'll work remotely, you now just accepted something. And that weakens your position at the end of the the process when you truly need to have the power and you need to ask for everything you want in the negotiation process. You just keep pushing them off. I'm sure we'll work that out. I'm sure we'll work out whatever the right arrangement is. If we're right for each other, what's next? Keep going, keep going, keep going. You get down to the end, they are loving you. They say, Lisa White, gotta have you. What's the number? Make me an offer, right? You wanna you wanna catch the offer, you don't wanna pitch your offer. So now they say, okay, Lisa, we're coming in. 
you look great, 250,000. Awesome. Uh, that's great. Let me think about it. Do you have any wiggle room? You come back. Here's what I want. I want 275,000. I want a $50,000 bonus. I want six weeks vacation. I want to work from home four days a week. I'll come into the office one day a week. Whatever it is, you lay it all out all at one time. You don't accept anything along the way. These little things, you don't even know you're doing it and you're making, they're making concessions and you're making acceptances and you don't want to do that because now when you come down to the end and you want the extra 25 bones and you want the extra two weeks vacation and you want the, all this and that, right? You have weakened your position. You need to ask for it all at once and then you, hopefully you will get all of it, but you likely will get some of it, but you have a better chance of getting more of it when the list is this long. Because if you start chiseling away at, oh, I can work from home. Oh, I don't have to travel. I, I don't have to do this and that. All of a sudden, you are taking away things that you want them to be giving you at the end. And what happens is you get down to the end and you don't have anything to negotiate. And then the things that you ask for at the end, you're less likely to get because they feel like they've already given you stuff. At this point, when you're asking all at once, you haven't accepted anything. They haven't given you anything. They, if they meet you halfway on all this stuff, then you compromised and you look great. If you start accepting things along the way and you get down to the end and then you start asking for something, they're like, this Lisa, gimme, 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 right? And you're the same person. You just wanted to work from home. So, so think about that. So the, the short answer is you don't ask for anything until you get down to the end. You just tell them you're open. Everything can change. If the, if the silly recruiter says, we really want this person in the office five days a week, don't pay any attention to that, okay? That recruiter doesn't know anything. That recruiter doesn't make any decisions, right? Everything changes once they learn more about you. And companies are willing to do whatever they can to get the right person. And especially now, we're all on video chats. This is the way, right, going forward. It should have been this way for a long time. We just all had a crash course in it. And now we got used to it. And this is going to be the new normal. I hate that expression, but that that's it's true. So I hope that helps. That's a phenomenal question. And Lisa, if you are on my email list, you're going to get a video to this effect on Tuesday. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope it helped. All right. And I, Cindy and I would not take, I would not wait for them to bring up the, the, I would not accept it when they bring it up. That's the mistake you make. So don't do that. Paula Capizani, how you doing? Finished the interview intervention ebook the other day, loved it. Uh, got a chance to use learnings in an interview. Probably my best yet. Thank you for your tea. Folks, I love this beauty. Next year will be the 10th anniversary of me writing it, and then the following year will be the the 10th anniversary of 2022. But grab it. I uh, I pay for the shipping and all that stuff. Uh, I do ask for $7 is a little reimbursement for the material cost, the envelope, and I have a service fee that I pay the guys to pick it in the warehouse. That's what you're paying for. So all you internationals, you make out like a bandit. Um, but but I I, uh, I just asked seven bucks. I give you the book, this hard book right here. I give you the ebook, the audio book, and I give you another bonus ebook called How to Interview the Employer. Seventy five great questions to ask before you take any job, which is a, a great one. Paula, thank you for that, and uh, love the little beach picture. But it, folks, if you don't have that book, grab it. It's really a great, really great help. All right, Heather. Oh, Heather, Heather, my Heather. My boot camper and my leader. I was laid off. When asked by recruiters, I state this. Recruiters then drill me, stating the company I work for should be experiencing success due to COVID. One shouldn't be negative in interviews, but this is a poorly run company. How do I respond without speaking negatively of my prior employers? Okay, Heather, this is a phenomenal question. Folks, uh, you, ought to, you ought to give Heather a high 10 for this one because, it, right, this is an exception to what I would normally say. So what would I normally say? All of you that are not Heather, let's take you first. If you get laid off, meaning laid off, meaning there is more than you, you plus, you plus one, you plus a hundred, you plus a thousand, you plus whatever. It's the easiest explanation in the world. The, the company decided 
to disarm this unit. The company decided to outsource this unit. The company decided that this unit was no longer strategic, whatever. I and a whole bunch of other people got let go. Okay, that's it. It's not personal. It's not surgical. Heather didn't do anything wrong. She didn't, right, get taken out and fired by by her lonely, right, by herself. Okay, that's it. Don't make a big deal out of it. This, this is what happened. Company went in another direction. Now, this, uh, Heather, I don't know off the top of my head what company that you work for, but whether uh, it is thriving is debatable. Now, what I would ask you is, it, were, is there a division or is your unit uh, suffering as a result of COVID? So just because a company is thriving doesn't necessarily mean the unit was thriving. And you don't have to say anything about it being poorly run or any of that stuff. You can just talk about how this particular unit or whatever, the company was still looking to make cost cuts because of whatever. You, you need to find the one thing that you can say to them that they as outsiders would not know not being inside that company. And let's be honest, um, if, if, if this is me and, and you know, I really, I, I wish I knew either the, the market, actually, Heather, if you let me know what the market is or if you wanna let me know what the company specifically does, uh, I might be able to give you some more color and I'd be happy to do that here. Uh, if you, you just head down to the chat and then uh, Kara can, can slack it to me. But my, my, my answer without knowing specifically what the company is, I just can't remember what the company is that you work for. Uh, I would say, well, but in, inside this company, in this particular unit, there were some issues because. It, it's not even about the company. It's just about that, that this particular section of the organization. And if it's truly a layoff, you're not the only one that was let go. So I, I find it hard to believe. I, I find it easy to believe that a recruiter might ask you that. But you said asked by recruiters. I'm surprised that many recruiters would be drilling you about this. I really am. So I, I would like to know more. And um, and uh, if you you know if you if you get to that, maybe I can tack on a little extra here uh, as we go. All right. Hope that helps. Bethany, my my, my boot camper and my leader. How are you, dear? Great. It was so great to meet you in uh, in Florida. Dean, how are you? Another boot camper. Giovanni, how would you address political questions as a measure of one's personality in an interview or application? I would not at all address political anythings. Okay, I think politics are a subject that we should stay away from. None of you know my, my viewpoints on any of this. Uh, because I think to label somebody based on their political viewpoints is ridiculous. And I also think that the world is not as cut and dry as Democratic, Republican, or whatever it is, wherever you know you all live. So I would stay away from it. And if somebody asked me in an interview about my political beliefs, the only thing that I would say to them is, I, I, I live in a country where we have multiple parties. I support everybody's uh, a, right to have their own opinion and support whatever they want to support. What I do not support is them being, um, you know, unpleasant about it. And, 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 and that's all that, that, you know, I mean, we don't need to be having riots and other things because of your beliefs. I think that, you know, you're, you're happy, you know, I'm happy to listen to you and share my, my thoughts. I think, you know, smart people and adults can, can do that without, without, you know, flying off the handle. And what, it doesn't matter to me what your political belief is, as long as you're nice to me and you're respectful and, and that's the way I look at that. And that's it. I mean, I, I would not go anything further than that. I really would not. I, I, I wouldn't. And no one would be able to peg me either because I have, um, certain things that I believe on the Democratic side. I have certain things that I believe uh, strongly on the Republican side. And, um, you know, and it's the last thing that I want to do is, is talk about that stuff. But that's, I, I would not be, I would not be addressing any questions about that. And that's a pretty bad line of questioning. Now, this is different if you are working as a lobbyist, or it's different if you have, you know, you're working in, you know, Washington and you're, right, you're, you're, you're going to be supporting you know, the Democratic nominee or the presidential candidate or whatever. 
So that's my that's my view on that. Davida, my boot camper, Mike, Michael Flynn, great to see you, and Sandra, my VIP, looking forward to our session on coming up next week. And Tammy, a boot camper, hey Laura, Paula had an assessment center at company I interviewed for, first one ever for me. Company hasn't filled position yet, received no feedback on how I did any pointers on how to ace an assessment center. I don't even know what an assessment center is, Paula, but I would, uh, I don't know if that's a Brazilian thing or what, but, uh, or Portugal thing or wherever you are located. Um, it, I, I, I don't know what an assessment center is. I, I, I know what assessments are and online assessments and those kind of things. Uh, but I, 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 I wish I could help you there. I do not know. <laughs> yes, Kara's here with the Blue Wrench. Connie Mack, my boot camper from Colorado, and Beth from Kentucky. Steve W., how you doing, my boot camper? All right, Laura Cobb, you got one here for me. Follow-up from last week. Recruiter offered an interview for a job I never applied for. Description fit well. Two interviews with success. First day on Monday, report time, 2 p.m. I wait to get contacted. Nada, 205, gentle text. Nada, 250. I leave a voicemail, 345, no follow-up. Was I ghosted? I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, it's uncommon. It happens. Uh, a few weeks back, I, I, missed, uh, I missed a coaching session, only one I've ever missed because we had a little emergency in the house. I, was un I, did, I ran out of the house, did not have my phone with me because I ran out in a frenzy. And, uh, right? and I, if that was an interview... I would have called you immediately the moment I got back, which is what I did with my coaching client, and off I went. I couldn't couldn't even tell you. Bob, how you doing? My boot camper, Miss Marie, how are you, my boot camper? Let's see, Melissa Olson, how you doing? Oh, look at all Fabs, my boot camper. You guys are awesome. Flying Uber Tuber, Stacy Arturo, my new boot camper. Well, great to have you, buddy. Hope you're enjoying it. All right, what do we got here? My favorite Houston Texan. <laughs> Got to feed up. If returning to an industry in which one worked 20 plus years ago, where's the best place to highlight relevant experience on the resume, or would it be a best to address it in the cover letter? Davida, a couple things. I would uh, pull it forward into the career profile, and I would have an additionally sentence, probably like the second sentence, about this additional experience or accomplishments that you have. I would address it into in the cover letter. It's okay to say I'm returning to this market uh, because I enjoyed it so much or whatever. That's okay too. It it really is okay. I would I would if I were you uh, and because you, you're a boot camper, I would make sure if you have not already to watch the career changer module. Uh, while you are you are career changing back, it's been a couple decades. Uh, I understand that you know you pr you probably have a lot of experience in what you were doing before. It's just been a while, but there are a number of things in that a module that I think will really help you. That's how. They, but those are the spots for sure. Dave Nari, how are you? You know, I gotta tell you, Heather. Uh, we okay. So Heather's asking about the merchandise. So I set up a Mile Walk Academy gift shop. And I, I needed to test the, uh, the clothing and this, that other stuff. And I just, I wanted to get it rolling and I needed to get it set up. So we didn't do all the artwork for, and the logos for everything, but I just put it out there and I used text and I put hashtags and other things so I could order the stuff so I could look to see what I liked so I knew what to keep and what to ditch. And then COVID hit. And then the company that runs the gift shop wasn't distributing anything for like a month and so we were trying to give swag away and we ordered it and people weren't getting it shipped for a month then they got back to work and then it's still taking them like two weeks just to ship something that's taken another two weeks to get to you so i i've put it on the back burner but yes i will uh we've been working with my art guy and my video guy to to to, to do that <laughs> all right wait i think you're saying Meal subscription deliver. Okay, wait, Heather, going back to you. Ah, okay. 
We're going back. We're going back to Heather. Ooh. Going back to Heather, who was asking me. And now Heather, I do remember. I do remember. Um, I, I do remember this about. Okay, so Heather is working for a meal delivery company, and while that is great, but but all you need to say is just to save money, the company outsourced the 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 meal, you know, the marketing channel uh, in this area to save money. So they let twenty five percent of the work staff go. I would not even I would not be arguing with somebody who's that close minded. I really would not. And uh, I know it's been multiple recruiters, and I appreciate that. Right, that 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 on the surface sounds like it would be a company that should have that or should be thriving, but you know who knows? I I, I really would not. I, I I would not. I'm gonna go back and hopefully Heather, you've heard me say this a million times, and I'm saying it to you, and I'm saying it to everybody here. I would not be spending my time trying to convince people who are closed-minded, short-sighted. Or obstinate about this stuff, I would be spending all my time looking for people who understand and are open-minded. This, these just aren't your people, and they're not your companies. And I would just move on. Literally, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm saying to you, your time and your energy is better spent sending more messages out and trying to find those people that are receptive. Right? The college student, don't spend your time trying to convince a company who's not open to hiring somebody without experience. The career changer, do not spend a lot of time trying to pursue organizations when the people inside them insist that some, they have to have somebody with experience. Move on. It's just your time is better spent. And Heather, same to you. All right, I hope that helps. And I, I, I do remember now, and now I won't forget that. All right, let's oop, get down. Hey, MK, Don, how you doing? Lou? Lou from New Jersey. Tabasco Kitten, great to see you. Sharonda, hi. Daniel Gomez, Igor. MG, how you doing? Melissa, Rochelle from Huntington Beach, how are you? H Helena from Barcelona, and my leader. Oh, wonderful. Carrie Freeman, how are you, how are you doing? Uh... Laura, I don't know what flare post is. Um, MK, what do you do if the recruiter asks you your expected salary as they don't want to waste my time? Also tells you the salary is 30K below what I'm earning. Okay, MK, my boot camper. And my leader. Okay, so anybody, I'm always going to tell you the same thing. Every single time, I don't care if it's 100K less. I mean, if it's 100K less, you got to really be thinking, is, am I, did I select the right opportunity, the right company, or whatever? If the recruiter says, what's your expected salary? I'm open. I'm open. What I get to do, who I get to do it with, I'm sure we'll be able to come to something amenable. You've seen the two videos I put out on this. And if they say, I don't want to waste your time, you're not wasting my time. I'm not wasting your time, right? If, if you're telling me that the salary is 30 below, 30K below what I'm earning, if it's me, if I'm absolutely loving the company, I go. I go in because nothing can happen if you shut the door and walk out, right? If you get in there and they are loving you, the money will come from somewhere. And MK, you should know the story about Karen because I've given you that one in the boot camp where she was 75K below the target salary at the opener. And she called me. We had a coaching session. We had multiple coaching sessions. It took her through the process. She went all the way through, first candidate through, and then, then the others had to catch up. She waited for weeks, and I just kept coaching her to say, don't worry, I'm sure we'll be able to work something out. You understand where I am financially. I understand where you are financially. And long story short, wonderful story short, they gave her an offer with 75K less. And then when the negotiating got done and I worked with her on this, she got the money. Okay, where'd they get the money? They decided to push two positions that they were going to recruit for into the next quarter to free up some budget to give to her. And they figured out how to smooth it out on the back end. It, there's always money available. There's always money available if they need you. If they don't need you or they could pay 30K less for somebody who isn't as awesome as you, fine. That's not your company. But you don't know that until you go through the process.
Now, if you're saying to me, well, Andy, I don't have time to burn because I love my job and I don't see the need to kick tires, well, that's a different story. But if you're somebody who doesn't like your job or you're somebody who needs a job, I would go. I would run through it. I would. This, it, believe me, you just you don't know what will happen. So that's my thought on that. Natalie Allman, good to see you back in the, in the leadership program. Hey, Andy, Pearl from Mumbai. I'm looking for a new job. I'm going through all your online stuff. Absolutely love it. Thanks. Appreciate it. Love you. Love you back, Pearl. Love you all for, for showing up to these. I mean, I just love having you guys in these sessions. If you are loving this, please share it. Make sure you're subscribed to the, uh, to the station. Oop. Make sure you're subscribed to the station. I put new videos out every Tuesday. Lots of times I put them out on Friday too. Uh, if you are not following me on the other social sites, Instagram is my fave. We put two videos a day out on Instagram. We put one or two a week out on YouTube. We put two a day out on Instagram. I put two motivational quotes, two videos every day on Instagram. And what I love about Instagram is you just pull up your phone, you know, you, you, you pull the phone up, you go to the profile, you, you can see all the squares, and then we've optimized it so that there's the headlines inside the picture so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Watch what you like, leave the rest. Most of the videos on Instagram are between like one minute and maybe eight minutes. And so they're bite size. A lot of them are clip outs from the live shows. So imagine you can get them fed to you. Oh my, I love that. that they have got the absolute best platform of everybody. They really do. And, uh, but you know, connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, on Facebook, my, my, uh, my Facebook page and all that good stuff. I, I, I love to have the conversation with you wherever you want to have it. JG, how you doing? I know you follow me on Instagram. Wade Higgins, thanks for the presentation video. Of, oh, you're welcome. I did an interview, uh, question one, 15 minute answer. It's been a week, have not heard back, but still hopeful. I'm hopeful for you too. A week is not the end of the world. But remember, every time you guys go into an interview, three things you gotta get when you come out. Actually, let's let's give you a quick clip here. Wade, I know Stacy's gonna like this because she needs one of these. All right. Every time you go into an interview, you need three things when you come out. What are they? What's the next step? Who's gonna contact me about it? When am I gonna hear from them? If they say we don't know what the next step is. What would the next step usually be? Okay, who would usually contact me? That kind of stuff, right? If you know that they aren't going to get back to you within a within two weeks, you got nothing to sweat. I did a coaching session last night. I don't know if he's here right now. Awesome dude in London, it's the UK, interviewing with a private equity company. He's interviewing with a private equity company that's going to be deploying a person, hopefully him, to one of their portfolio companies. I get all the email, right? So in order to prep for my coaching session with him, I get all the backstory, I get all the emails, I get the exchanges, I look at what the other guy says, I look at the job description, I look at their exchanges, I analyze all this stuff because I can see things people can't, right? So I'm looking at this and I'm, I'm telling my client that this company is amazing and here's why and you can read it all in the communication about how they've laid this out, what the way the job description reads, listen to the job description, literally listen to what they're saying, right? Not what's on the paper, but what they're, the messaging that they're actually sending you. And then how the, 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 the guy communicates with you. Are they giving you the layout? Are they telling you what to expect? Are they telling you who you're going to meet with? Are they, they had it all laid out. Here's what the process looks like. This is the first session. This is the second session. This is the third session. So, uh, I mean, that's the kind of stuff that that you need to uh, that that you need that you need to have. Now, if you got a one-way interview uh, on your, um, like for example, if yours is a one-way interview and you don't have somebody to ask these questions, then what you do is you immediately reply to whoever set the interview up, the recruiter, the HR person, whoever, even the hiring official. Hey, I just took the thing. Thank you so much. In your thank you email. So thank you so much. I'm real. You know, you can't say I'm more excited. You haven't heard anything. You just talk to you talk to a camera, right? So, hey, that was great. Really appreciated the opportunity. Would love to know what the next step would be. Who's going to contact me and when I might hear back? Right? That's it. Email it. 
right? If it's a one-way video interview, right? Because that's becoming common, right? So, wait, I hope that helps, and I hope we covered a couple of scenarios, but I think that's a, that's a good one, and I'm hopeful for you. Leo, I got some profile views on my LinkedIn, but my last job was in Dubai, and now I'm back in Brazil. Could this be a detracting people from actually contacting me for jobs? Leo, love the picture, buddy. Okay, this is, this is interesting because I know a lot of you are moving, right? We're very mobile these days, and I know you're moving, and I know you're open to moving. So, Leo, I'm not a big um, a believer in, in, in paying a lot of attention to who's viewing my profile. I just don't. I simply do not look. And if I was a job seeker, I would not look. Why? It's noise. It's got, you have no idea why somebody's looking at your profile. None, mind you. Okay? When, I, when we were doing a lot of recruitment... We would step through profiles on LinkedIn, open, look, close, open, look, close. A million reasons. I could have I could have bounced you for a million reasons. I might have accidentally opened your thing and it looked like, hey, somebody opened my boy, that recruiter opened my, you know, looked at my profile. No, I was I was on my way looking for something and I happened to trip over your profile. You just don't know. Now, I don't know if it's detracting people, and I don't think it really matters that your last job was in Dubai. If you're in Brazil now, I mean, the thing that I'm mostly concerned is the fact that you're in Brazil, and I'm hoping you're okay, because I know that there was just a tremendous number of uh, pandemic cases this past week in uh, in Brazil. So I I, uh, I don't I don't think so. I don't know. I that's highly speculative, and I wouldn't I wouldn't be be concerned. Hey, one thing I want to tell you guys about. How are we doing here? Um, I, I've got more time for you to answer more questions, but I just want to show you something for two minutes. If you have not uh, heard of my leadership uh, program, I have a leadership monthly live program. And very quickly, one time each month, I go live with my leaders. So you've seen some of the hashtags where I discuss leadership qualities, self-help techniques, high-performance techniques, things that help you develop your career and live a fulfilled life. It's really awesome. It's ongoing coaching. Uh, there's an orientation week, but every month we get together, you get these beautiful workbooks. I mean, it's been awesome. I mean, it's, it's just, we've talked about building confidence, building life systems, building trust, listening, persuasive speaking. We've talked about maintaining your energy, how to persevere, how to deal with unexpected change. I mean, the list goes on and on. But tomorrow, I have a session on communication, sending and receiving uh, your messages. And I just want to show you what we are going to cover. And if you're interested, uh, this is it. I'm going to show you really quickly. I give you a workbook. Um, everybody gets a workbook at these sessions. So I, I literally teach uh, for an hour or so. I take questions for a half hour or an hour or so. And this is... Uh, this is the workbook. This is the table of contents. But we're going through specifically what communication is, how to prepare, all of this uh, considering what you're doing in advance of communication. This is how you set up a successful communication. Listening first, but what it really means to be able to listen to the meaning and extract it. Uh, how to actually confirm receipt of the message. Hey, you're in job interviews, a lot of you, right? Wouldn't this be helpful to understand you heard me actually listen to what I said, it registered, or I got you kind of thing. And then when you send your messages, um, not for whatever kind of message you're sending, you're, you're informing, you're educating, you're inspiring, you're persuading, and what are the principles that go along with that? This is prep work to make sure you are setting up your communication properly, following through, being specific and congruent with your behavior has a lot to do with the way people listen to you. People don't even get this. So anyway, and thought provokers to do some self-awareness stuff, I always have a, a challenge for you that they seem to love. But this is a workbook. So imagine getting these every month. Um, you know, this is basically what the talk's going to be tomorrow. I know I'm kind of blowing through this really quick, but I just wanted to let you know, uh, you know, and then here's the, here's the challenge. But it's really... Uh, really a lot of fun. I, uh, I, I do this every month with my leaders. So tomorrow is communication. We're doing it at 11 o'clock central time. If you cannot make it, 
we give you the recording. So, uh, you know, you might get a message from me later today or tomorrow on, on this. It's a ton of fun. It's a monthly subscription. You can cancel any time. You can try it out for a month. Uh, it's 49 bucks a month for all of that, plus the teaching, plus all the other stuff, plus all the bonuses, plus everything that I give you is phenomenal. And, uh, and uh, if you want, you can enroll for a year to cut the rate in half. So it's two ninety seven, which is like twenty four seventy five a month. But it's it's really cool. But I hope I hope you join me, leaders uh, who are here. You know, maybe share with the with the crew uh, what uh, what it's like for you. Uh, a lot of them uh, put in the system about the therapeutic nature of it, the therapy session, <laughs> the psychology session, and all that stuff. But it is. You know, a lot of you know me from my job search curriculum, right, and the career pursuits, but imagine having me teach you every single month these kind of things that are going to elevate your game and going to make you great at, at what you do uh, and live a, live a great life. So it's really, uh, really a lot of fun. I hope you can join us. And while, while I had you here, I wanted to just, I at least wanted to, to mention that. All right, let's let's get back to some questions. Mayor from down the block, great to see you. Yes, it is sunny. Paul, good to see you. I, Paul, I think that's a good one though. And Heather, I, I would say I would say the same thing. Short, simple, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna burn a lot of time with you if that's the way they're gonna behave, right? Like that's I, that's what I would I would be feeling. Rob, how you doing? Yes, nearby. Daniel, hey to you. So I'm a boot camper and a leader. Good luck. Hi, everyone. I'm a counts clerk. Wonderful to have you from Tanzania. Mia Papia. I'm so uncomfortable negotiating salary. I have a final interview today. No one has asked me about salary yet. Good. But I know it's coming. How can I build confidence having that conversation? Mia, the minute we get done with this, I would go watch my salary negotiation playlist. I really would. It'll help. Barsha, hey to you. Mike R, thank you for that, buddy. You are you are welcome. Donna from Hotlanta. Daniel from Venezuela. Let's see what we got here. Ooh. There we go. Hello, handsome. All right. Daniel from Venezuela and trying to move to Canada. What should I put on my CV in LinkedIn if I have not? Uh, if I don't have a work permit yet, should I change my profile country, specify some information? So here's what I would do. For those of you that are inside a country and you're moving locations within the country, so we have a lot of people inside the U.S. where I am that want to move states. It's okay if you would like to change your location, if you can explicitly say to anybody who contacts you, Yes, I you know I'm in Chicago, but I'm I'm moving to San Francisco. I'm moving, whether you hire me or not. I'm moving, so I'm I'm targeting uh, opportunities out in that area, and maybe you know maybe you have an address. My sister lives out there. I probably would use her location as my home base, kind of thing. That's if if you're within the country and there's not a lot of complications. You're you're talking about moving countries. So if, if somebody was trying to move into the U.S., they're going to visa issues. They're going to have all kinds of stuff. I, in that case, I would not recommend moving my, or, or, or changing my country location. But what I might do is inside, uh, the, inside the notes to the recruiters, there is a private section on your LinkedIn profile where you can actually explain to recruiters, hey, I'm currently living in uh, Venezuela, but I'm moving to Canada. And I'm I'm working on my work permit or I'm whatever you know I don't even know what the process is in Canada to do that but the, I would just put it in the notes and then I would target organizations and I would I would put that in the cover letter or or let them know somehow some way that you're coming but you also have to recognize that that is going to reduce the number of opportunities that you have I mean it's just a fact that it because it's harder to hire you than it is somebody else in the location now. If you have a specialty skill, I don't know what you do, but you might have something that's really, really unique or something that's in high demand where there's just not enough of you that know this. And if that's the case, then that's the thing I would be playing on. But I, I, I'm not, 
Uh, I'm not a proponent in that case when you have something that drastic to start doing that. And you might be getting calls or you might be targeting recruiters who respond back to you and then they're going to be they're going to be wholly turned off. It's one thing to say, hey, I'm moving from Chicago to San Francisco. I've already made up my mind um, and I'm coming whether you pay for it or not. It's another thing to say, well, I'm actually in Venezuela and I don't have a work permit and I know you're in Canada and you thought I was there. It's, it's just it's not a great it's not a great situation. I'd be honest about it. All right, Mary V, I have been laid off with my job eliminated label three times now. Does this label have another meaning? I, if I am doing something wrong, I do not want to repeat it. Okay. Mary V, uh, if you've been laid off uh, with my job eliminated label, I do not, uh, I'm not into labels. Uh, I, I'm not sure what you're getting at here. If you're laid off, you were laid off. I, and if somebody says, why'd you leave that company to go to that company? Just say, that, you know, that unit was disbanded. And I went to that company and that unit was disbanded. You know, this is common. We as recruiters, Milewalk, my executive search firm, have done a lot of work in the consulting, IT consulting space and software company space, management consulting space, and so on. In software companies, software companies are constantly buying up each other. Okay? Units are disbanded. Uh, some are, people are retrained or some people are not. Some people are let go. Sales units are, are wiped out. And it's like, it's common. So it's like I'm numb to it. Now, I don't know what industry you're in. And, and three times to get laid off, uh, it's not like you were fired three times. That's different. So you might be in one of those markets where it's common that units are, there. That's that happens. So I don't, I don't know what to tell you there, Mary. I, 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 I certainly couldn't advise you in this setting on why this is happening to you. Um, and I don't, I don't know what industry you're in, so it's hard to say in aggregate uh, or at the highest level what's happening there. But I wish you a lot of luck. Wei Lun, hey, to my boot camper. Uh, Laura, thanks. I don't know what I said, but <laughs> that's probably go to hell. Oh, man. If you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. That is true. Thomas, how you doing? Uh, is uh, The volume looks good uh, on my end. Everything looks green and lit up. Uh, anybody having problems? No. Okay. Chris, I'm getting burnt out on having to always tailor my resume. Then don't tailor it. I No, I'm not being funny. I don't want you to tailor it. Uh, can I have a default resume that I constantly use if I'm applying for the same kind of role? Yes. Yes. Okay. Here, Stacy, this this will be a this will be a clip for you that I don't think we have. Do I have to tailor my resume every single job? So, Chris is asking, I'm getting burnt out on having to always tailor my resume. Can I have a default resume that I constantly use if I'm applying for the same kind of role? The answer is yes, please do. But a couple things. Let's let's give you some context here because I think it's important. Now, number one, I'm always advising you stay out of the applicant trashing system. That's why I call it because that's what it is. Stay away from the ATS. Okay. Now, if you are targeting bosses, targeting recruiters, recruiter boss hunting, recruiter hunting, talent acquisition hunting, HR hunting, call it whatever you want. But if you're targeting those people and you are submitting your resume to them, I simply re recommend that you have a resume. If there's a job description that you know before you target the boss or the HR person or whoever it is, run it through job scan. See if, see if there's low hanging fruit and then you should only be massaging. Literally, I would be changing, oh, I'm in, I'm in sales. We call it business development executive at my location. They call it account exec. Swap the wording, whatever, make it quick, right? You should not be like rewriting all this stuff, okay? So that's a quick one. If you are going into the applicant trashing system, which I hate, and you have to tailor it each time, I would have a base set resume and I would only be changing the nomenclature to coincide with the job description that I was submitting it. One base resume, minor edits. If you are a contractor, okay, and your resume is lengthy, and you or contractors, 
two-page resume contractors supplemental document with everything else you do okay here's my complete work history it's separate okay two-page resume separate list of all your projects forever and ever for your 30 years okay now here's here's the swapping part and this goes for contractors or it goes for very senior people on the resume the Andy Lasavita school of resume writing up at the top you have a career profile and you have these highlights and then within the body you have your professional experience if you're a contractor and let's say you your uh, experience is in customer relationship management implementations you've used Oracle Salesforce Microsoft CRM sage whatever okay it, you got all this in your work history if you are applying for a job where they're using Microsoft CRM then pull those forward and make sure those are in your resume and you're just you're just swapping okay if you are an executive your highlights should coincide with the impact you're gonna make for this organization if I'm a salesperson and I'm interviewing for a, uh, a senior vice president of sales I don't want to have three bullets in my highlights that say crushed my revenue crushed my revenue number crushed my quota right like none of that nonsense no did you did you build a sales team from zero to whatever and you ran the US and you took your team from zero to 25 million in a year whatever like the, okay selling point built an integrated sales and delivery model to optimize blah 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 infrastructure item right so I'm a builder so I put processes in place right so you want the variety and you want to span that and you might want to mix and match depending on the type of role that you're interviewing for that's the only tailoring you should do anybody who is crazy enough to have multiple resumes because they're pursuing multiple jobs job types like I got a sales resume I got a marketing resume I got a whatever you need to go back and figure out what really drives your happiness because you think well I'm keeping my options open no you're diluting your power you're diluting your energy right every time you say yes to something you say no to something else if you really like marketing don't go pursuing sales jobs pursue more marketing jobs make that work right every time you're looking for a sales job that's minutes that you're wasting not looking for a marketing job that's minutes you're wasting not assessing the data that's coming back as a result of you sending your marketing resume out your covers out your connections and all that other stuff right so so I think you know to answer your question Chris I don't want you to be burning a lot of time tailoring a lot of stuff and if you're spending that much time tailoring this is not just for Chris but anybody you're probably spending too much time putting the resume in, in the applicant tracking system the best thing that you guys can do for you if you want something free is to get into my job search challenge it's a five-part free course I teach you how to job search you will get interviews you do this my way if you want something premium based then that's my job search boot camp that is my premium job search program you can check that out as well job search challenge free job search boot camp paid so Chris love the question absolutely absolutely sensational question and uh, I hope I hope I did you a solid there that's really a great one and I know a lot of people struggle with it and I don't want you burning a lot of time doing that I would rather you be spending your time targeting companies targeting people sending them your message and or your resume and your messages and getting interviews that way all right hope that helps all right and look at that my mother is in the house could we all get a shout out for miss amelia because without miss amelia i would not be here to help you guys every week the 223 of you that i think are still here or whatever that uh what you know whatever you're whatever you're doing mom makes this happen right this does not happen without miss amelia so give her give her a shout out and Chris good for you great great to have you I'm glad I was able to answer that for you I hope you come back just as many people fail because they did plan okay wait I, Davida thank you for this folks go into whatever you are gonna do I'm gonna get a job I'm gonna have multiple opportunities I need to plan for that I need to plan for that problem single 
tied for the most requested reasons job search boot campers ask for coaching sessions with me is I have multiple offers how do I navigate this second biggest thing is I have an interview coming up I need to crush it how do you help me third biggest reason is I need you to help me with my direction and where I'm gonna go and my route and all that good stuff now I want you to think about this every single thing that you do in your life but let's talk about job searching because I know a lot of you you have those job searching problems right now when you wake up Every, on any given day, for, especially for those of you that are unemployed, your goal, if you follow my job search challenge, if you're really job searching, it's sticking your resume in the applicant trashy system, it's not job searching, okay? It, I want to be successful. I'm going to send this message. That's the first success. Somebody is going to get it and read it, and they're going to respond to me. That's the second That's the second success factor. So when I say plan for being successful, what could happen? Every possible outcome. They could not respond. I can't do anything with that. One of those, right? Don't care. They get back to me. They can get back to me with one of infinitely many responses, but let's, for simplicity of my point, make it two. Yes, Andy, I would love to talk to you and get you in for an interview. Awesome. I'm ready for that one, right? Success. No, Andy, I'm not, I'm not interested I have no idea why you're emailing me, but we don't have any openings and I don't know why you're emailing me and no thank you. Okay, all right, what's my next thing? Okay, well, I can't do anything about the response, but I can do something about my reaction and I've already planned for what my response is going to be when they say no. See, no is successful. No is getting a response because that's the goal. You can't do anything with silence, but you could do something with a no. Then I can respond back. What's my next thing? Okay, as you can see, thank you for reading it. Why well, I'd love to work with you. You can see I'm in the middle of my job search. You know, do you know anybody, anybody at different organizations? Can we network? Can we, whatever, right? That's, that's me being successful because I got a response, even though it was a negative response. A lot of you look and you say, I got a no. Well, so what? You can do something with a no, right? So you plan and you move forward. I guarantee you that mentality with what can I do with this? What can I do with this? You will always be successful because you'll always be moving yourself forward, right? You take no for an answer. You stopped. What do I always say? Be a link, not an endpoint, right? So, so think that way, but you got to plan for the outcome. Right now at the Mile Walk Academy, every single day, every single day, I answer questions for people in the leadership program and in the job search boot camp. They flood them every day, right? They send messages in. I worked really hard to get that problem, but at some point, I'm not going to be able to answer everybody's question every single day because there's going to be so many people in there that I just can't do it. I have to plan for that now. While I don't have that problem, that's what I'm talking about when I say plan for, plan for success. I will fail if they say, well, Andy sells his program, but he's never there, right? I quit my trainers because they're no longer present. I'm not going to be that guy, okay? So I have to figure out a way. So is it, what is it? I got to educate Kara how to answer these things. I got to educate Stacy how to answer these. We got to put in a better knowledge database that says every time somebody asks me that question, boom, boom, I hit this button and it goes. And then they got their answer and they got it super fast, right? Like that's what I'm talking about. You are always working for tomorrow's problem. Think of it that way. What problem do I want to create for myself? I want to create a problem where somebody gets back to me. Okay, great. Then what are you going to do with it? Be ready to handle it. I, you guys might think I'm ranting and going off. This is why a lot of you are not getting multiple job offers. You're not planning for success. You need to do that, right? And then you get down to the end and you, and you have hiccups because you got two offers and you stun yourself, right? And you didn't plant the seeds before. Plan, plan, plan. You're going to be successful. Think that way. I have no idea why I'm off on that. But Davida, thanks for that one. Uh, can you tell I get a little amped up from time to time? <laughs> Ron from Portland, great to see you. Dinesh, how are you? Great to have you. Zippy Entertainment. Cynthia Lou, how you doing? Okay, wait, I, I'm going to put this up because I don't know what this is. Uh, Andy, what are your thoughts on the new LinkedIn feature of photo frame with open to work? Um, 
if this can somebody can somebody please tell me I'm I know I'm gonna lose it here I, I I'm I'm a I'm a Medina this has nothing to do with you but I'm gonna absolutely absolutely lose it if this is what I think this is um can somebody please tell me can can y'all in a chat because you probably you probably know this better than I know. open to work does that mean that LinkedIn is going to give you an opportunity to put something in in um, on your profile picture that says I'm open to opportunities or I'm open to new opportunities or I'm I'm looking for new opportunities does can somebody tell me is that what that is please can can somebody tell me that is that Medina can you can Stacy or Kara can you select that to me I, I have to know this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose it if I, if, if this is what I think this is, and if I hope I'm totally wrong, because if LinkedIn is doing this, it is, it's already what I think is the absolute worst platform in the world. But I'm really gonna lose it if this is what I think it is. Anybody, Medina? I don't know, I don't know what that. If that is, I'm just speculating because I've not, I've not heard of this. Um, I, I don't know. Well, I'm going to, like, just let me know. We'll pull that one back up. If the company has uh, have, has another opening, which is much better fit than the one you have applied, should you withdraw? Okay. All right, so Kara's telling me she can't find it in LinkedIn. I don't know if anybody else uh, is, is, uh, is familiar with that. I, 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 if you haven't seen it, Stacy, can we put this in the chat for everybody? Um, okay, wait, hang on, Samuel, I will get this one in a second. <clears throat> okay, hang on. Medina, okay, so, so I am not... Okay, I'm not going to go into all the detail here. I I do not want anybody putting on their LinkedIn headline or or their first rec the most recent job open for new opportunities. O N O pound O N O or any of that crap. Looking for new opportunities, seeking new opportunities is the worst thing you can do. I'm not even going to go into why all that is because Stacy's going to give you a video on that. Okay, which which I recently put out on LinkedIn. It's about six minutes. Okay, now I am a huge fan, huge, of there is a little box in LinkedIn. It's been there for a long time, where you can actually put notes to recruiters that you are open to 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 working with them. You are looking for new opportunities. You're open. I'm moving. I'm this. I'm that. Awesome. It's private. Generally, recruiters who have invested in the LinkedIn recruiter package, it's a, it's a special offer from LinkedIn for recruiters, and it, it makes it easier for them to identify people who are actually open to, to getting calls and emails from them. If you're talking about private ones, so I, the photo frame thing threw me off. But this thing has been there for forever. I mean, it's years it's been there where you could go in and, and put those notes in. Do that. Let recruiters know you're open. Don't let the public know you're open. It does not help you. It does not help you. So uh, my thoughts on that is please do it, um, but do not make any of that public. I don't care if you've been out of work for a year. Don't make it public on your LinkedIn profile. And watch the video to learn my rationale for why. Uh, Samuel Lee, if the company has another opening which is a much better fit than the one that you've applied, should you withdraw the application one first or just ask the HR immediately for the second opening? Great question. So this happens a lot, right? You, you might not have discovered that there was an available opening and you applied or you sent an email to the recruiter uh, or maybe it surfaced after you applied. Either way, you always want to make sure that in your initial screen with the recruiter that you want to let them know that, hey, I'm I'm interested in your company. If, if you see my background and if there are other opportunities that you think 
are really great for me. I might not know. Maybe they're newly open. Maybe there were some things I didn't see. Let me know because I would like to. And, and actually, I, I, I did see one that popped up that I discovered after I applied to this, and it was whatever it was, and let him know. Okay, so that's that's one thing. But let's hang on, let's take this to another level. Let's say you get in there and you apply, and they don't they don't respond, right? Like applicant trashing system did its trashing thing. Silence, you don't get anything. And then a couple weeks later, another opportunity pops up that you like better, and you might even be a better fit for. You just reapply, like nobody's business. You just apply. It's okay. It's totally okay. And you can go that route as well. Let's hope that hope that helped. That's a great one. All right. How are we doing on time? All right. I got six more minutes. How do we get this in? All right. Wait. Tomorrow. Leadership, communication. If you are a boot camper and you are not in the leadership program and you have not taken your free pass to access the whole dang thing. First thing I'm going to tell you, shame on you. And second thing I'm telling you is that offer expires tonight. Okay, tonight. We are not fibbing. This is it. I made a special pass for you from last Saturday to today. That's it. I'm not doing this one again. This is way too, way too crazy. If you're not a boot camper, don't worry. You have no idea what I'm talking about. The leadership, the session tomorrow is on communication. It's what I showed you in that workbook. You get the workbook. You get the whole library of assets. It's killer. It's really, really great stuff to take your, your, uh, your career to the next level and your life and enjoyment of it to the next level. So I hope to see you tomorrow. And let's see if we can get a, uh, ah, we got a boot camper max some here. Let's get you over. All right. Should I avoid sending job hunting messages during Saturday to Monday as people are less likely to respond and use this time for planning? Search instead. Maxim. I'm going to tell you why I always tell you that we are a 24 by 7 world. And I want you to send your messages when it is convenient for you. Now, Tuesday mornings are really nice. Monday's inboxes tend to be flooded. Want to send it on Saturday or Sunday? Recruiters, they get them all the time. Most recruiters are looking at their emails on the weekends, believe me. They are. I used to think that I shouldn't be sending you emails on a holiday, on a Sunday. Do you have any idea that the open rate is the highest on Sundays now? And... Fourth of July is coming up. I don't know if I got an email coming out that day. Memorial Day, Easter, Good Friday. It makes no difference. Columbus Day, Christmas. People just read when they read. Don't you worry. You go send whenever you want to send. Now, I don't like sending stuff on, on Monday morning because I think, you know, if I'm, meaning for you guys. If you're sending stuff to somebody who's going to be a boss, who's busy, who's getting in the office on Monday morning, he probably or she probably doesn't want to be reading your cold job hunting email. Okay, I like to let them get Monday by. And then Tuesday morning, I think, is the best because then it gives them kind of maximum time to get you through the work week. But most people in this world who are go-getters and the kind of people you want to work for, they're checking their email all the time. And they probably have cleaned it out or are going through it on like I on Saturdays and Sundays I have to spend a lot of time in my inbox because I have to clean it up. It's an infusion of stuff that occurs throughout the week, and uh, and I'm spending a lot of time cleaning it. Like people, it, it cracks me up because they'll email me and then I'll email them right back on a Saturday or Sunday. They're like, oh my god, it's you! I was like, I didn't think you read these. It's like, yeah, sitting right here. Pop, you popped right up. Right, I'm just going through. I'm just working through my queue. So that's the way I I would I would. You know what? You all, I mean this. I'm not being funny. The world revolves around you. It does. You are in a situation where it is about finding that job you love or a better job or a new career or a whatever. It's about you. I support that. Make it about you. If Saturday morning is when you can send those emails, go ahead. You also, man, I mean, like, I don't know what your e if you're a Gmail user or whatever. Like, you could go on Saturday. You could schedule your emails. You could, you, Gmail's got a feature that says, no, send this Tuesday at 1 o'clock. Right? You just do that. But that's, that's cool, too. 
you could do that. But don't I wouldn't worry about it. I really would not. Saturday morning, Sunday night, Tuesday, Thursday morning. <laughs> love having you in the program, buddy. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed this. I love this. Over Still over 200 people. If you liked it, click the thumbs up. If you want to make sure you never miss my stuff, click the, click the little subscribe thing. One other thing, I never really say this. We have a Mile Walk Academy calendar of live events. It includes the live office hours. It includes the premium programs. You'll know everywhere I am. And what you do is you just go to the Mile Walk Academy and up top there's a thing that says calendar. You click it and we show you the calendar. It's like a Gmail. It's a Gmail calendar that we've set up. And then there's instructions at the bottom that tell you exactly how to sync it to whatever you're, you're not subscribing for anything. You're, you're basically just syncing the calendar and then you can tell it, you can tell your, your Apple iCal or your Gmail or your Outlook or whatever, how frequently you want it to sync. So like I sync mine every five minutes, it's just automated. So when Kara goes in there and she says, okay, live office hours, boom, 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 Thursdays. We got special events. I got special events in July. I got special event in August. I got a special event in September. Man, I am coming at you with some crazy stuff. Uh, we got some life life stuff in July. We got resume stuff in August. I got executive stuff in September. I mean, I we got all kinds of awesome stuff. If you want to know when that is, you just sync it. And it's just auto. It just populates. It's, it's, it's really cool. So it, if, especially if you're in the premium programs, you want to know when your boot camp coaching <laughs> sessions are and leadership sessions and all that. All that stuff's loaded. So, all right, folks and mom, love you all. Thanks for thanks for coming. It it means it does. It means the world to me. It really does. And uh, I just I can't thank you enough. I'm uh, let's see next week. Oh wait, next week is uh, is what is the I'm out next week. So I'm I'm off next Thursday. I'm 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 I gotta take a day or two to actually get some house stuff in order. So I'm off next Thursday. Uh, but I will see you right at the week right after that. But I, I'll be coming at you with the Tuesday videos and all that good stuff and like normal schedule as far as my communications to you. I'm off live office hours next week. I'm back the following week. But love to see you. You know where to find me. YouTube channel, blog, email list, all that good stuff. All right, y'all, be good. We'll see you soon. Take care.